The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain how background and setting relate to character and or theme. Learners should be able to recognize the socio-political and cultural background of texts. Hi there, and welcome to the first lesson in this series. In the next eight lessons, we're going to be learning about short stories. To help us understand all the elements of short stories, we'll be taking a closer look at one particular example, The Suit, which was written by Ken Temba. To help us unpack the history, the context, and the background of The Suit, Craig Mateus went to the streets of Sophia Town to discover more about what inspired this piece of writing. The Suit is a short story written more than 50 years ago and is set here in Sophia Town. I'm now in Sophia Town and a lot has changed since those days. During the 1950s, Sophia Town was one of the few suburbs in Johannesburg where black and white people could live together. It was one of the last places where black people could own land and became the cultural heart of black urban life. Indeed, Sophia Town was home to some of South Africa's top black musicians, politicians, workers, as well as gangsters. In 1955, 60,000 people were forced to be removed from Sophia Town by the nationalist government. Sophia Town was bulldozed and everything within it was destroyed. Their homes, the bars, the music walls, an entire way of life was demolished. And this was despite protests from the residents, the churches, the liberal newspapers and progressive white people. Many of the people that were removed were forced to go and live in Meadowlands. The place once known as Sophia Town was then renamed Triumph. I'm glad to say 10 years down the line, 10 years of democracy, and she is regaining her former glory and is being renamed Sophia Town. Well, Sophia Town, it was a, a place, it was a township of all the mixture of people. You know, we used to have Chinese, they were, they were owning shops. We used to have Indians, they were selling curry. We used to have all sorts of people doing whatever they wanted to do. And we used to have our parents, our aunties selling mkombo to African beer. We used to have the police hassling us about past laws. And the saddest part was when even we women were to carry passes because earlier it was men carrying passes. But afterwards, this, this law passed that we should carry passes to as women. In those days, there was a young man of the age of about 25 who lived around here. And his name was Daniel Canada Stemba. But his friends called him Ken. Now, Ken was born in 1924 in Marabastad, just outside Pretoria. But he spent most of his days right here in Sophia Town. I knew Ken Temba because he was one of the, the guys all uh, in drum, the great guys in drum magazine. And Ken Tamba was full of life. You know, there was life in that, guys, in that guy. And he would want to stop ladies and write, and you know, interview them just there and there. Because he was a loving character, always smiling to at them. As you can see, a lot has changed around here. There's not much left of the spirit of those years, except the music, the memories, and of course the stories, like the suit. By the end of this lesson, you should be familiar with the story The Suit. Have some knowledge of Sophia Town and Ken Temba. The story is simple but sad. Here is our version of the story. But if you would like to read the full text, you can access it on our website, www.mindset.co.za, in the Grade 11 Lessons. The morning started like every other morning. Philmon got ready for work and took Matilda, or Tilly as he called her, her breakfast in bed. Then he left for work. He greeted his old friend, Mr. Mapikela, but he could tell there was something wrong. 
Mr. Mapikela didn't seem comfortable about something at all. Son, if I could have avoided this, believe you me, I would. But there seems to be a man visiting your house every morning when you are at work. Philemon said, I have to go home. Philemon was very upset as he went home. He decided to pretend nothing was wrong. Tilly, I forgot my bus. Still Philemon pretended he hadn't seen anything different. Then he pointed out the suit. Philemon said, I see we have a visitor. We really must show him some of our hospitality. He will be treated with the greatest of consideration. He will eat with us and sleep in here. But if he vanishes or anything happens to him, Matilda, I'll kill you. Philemon went out for the day. Matilda spent the day making the house look nice and cooking a wonderful meal. Philemon said, Matilda, our visitor. The days went by and still Philemon kept up the ritual of treating the suit like a guest. He even insisted taking the suit out in public. Philemon said, our visitor needs an outing. How about a walk? As they walked through the streets, Matilda felt searing through her red hot needles of embarrassment and every needle point was a public eye piercing into her degradation. Then Matilda had an idea. Matilda said, if only I could lose myself in some activity, I would feel better if I could do some good. I could get my self-respect back. Phil, I'd like to join one of these cultural clubs for married women. Would you mind? Philmon said, I think that's a good idea. You can't be moping around here all day. Yes, you may. The cultural club was wonderful. They organized feasts, bazaars, youth activities, sport, music, self-help and community projects. Matilda said, Phil, could I organize a little party for my friends at the club? Philmon said, Yes, I suppose so. I'll give you some money to buy what you need. Everything was going wonderfully at the party when Philmon said, What about the guest of honor? Matilda said, Just this once, Phil. Matilda, get our visitor. Or are you ashamed of him? What's the idea, Philemon? Why must she serve a suit? What's happening? After the party, Philemon went drinking with a friend. Later that night, he returned. There she lay, curled as if just before she died, she begged for a little love, implored some implacable lover to cuddle her a little. Just this once. Just this once more. Philemon cried. Tilly! Now you know the story, The Suit. A little bit about the author, Ken Temba, and something about the setting of Sophia Town. Even if you didn't know this information, you would still be able to understand the story. But I'm sure you will agree that knowing a bit about the place and about the time in which the action took place helps you to better imagine what it may have been like. For example, because we know the story is set in the days of apartheid, we understand why Philemon claims to have forgotten his past. Also, being the 1950s, the fact that Tilly is responsible for cooking and decorating the home while Philemon works seems quite usual. And knowing that Ken Temba was a student of English helps us to explain why so many tricky words are used. When you are reading a short story or a novel in class, try to find out a bit about who wrote it, when it was written and where the action was set. You will find that knowing this information will give you clues about the writer's attitudes, issues that were topical and social situation at the time. In the next lesson, we'll take a closer look at the elements of the plot and the timeline. Your task is to track down a copy of the short story, The Suit. If you have access to the internet, you'll be able to find the text of the story, additional information and some activities you might like to try on our website www.mindset.co.za If you don't have access to the internet, you should be able to find a copy of the suit in a collection of short stories in your library. 
Having your own text of the story will help you to get the full benefit of these lessons as we will be analyzing the test in quite a lot of detail. So try to get yourself a copy. Until then, from me, Becky, goodbye.